All right, here we go. It is the Nightcap brought to you by Bearcat Journal right here uh, on the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you join if you want to really become a part of the family. Aaron and I are going to work in a little, a uh, couple extra things as we get through the season here. But as always, this show brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken. Visit www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Android, iPhone, everything Galactic. Get delivery uh, through the app and uh, Uber Eats will uh, bring it to your house or stop down at Galactic Fried Chicken in Dayton, Kentucky. Tell them to pump it up. Save yourself 15% off your order. What a night, Aaron. What a night. It's been a night. <laughs> Episode 100 of the BBP is in the books. That was that was so much fun. How far you and I and Brent have come. When you hit me up out of the blue in my DMs, did you ever think I could ask <laughs> I could ask you the same question? I mean, no. Did you what ever I think said, what I said, what I said to you when we talked that night, you hit me up in my DMs. Said, I was we'll like, figure something, we'll figure something out. I'll hit you up in a couple weeks. And sure enough, it was a couple weeks. I think it was three or four weeks before yeah. I even heard from you again. And then I was like, hey, I got an idea. Let's do a podcast with you and Brent and I'll like linger around and we'll have some fun with it. And it'll be a, a compliment to the BCJ podcast that Dave and I do. And now me, Dave, and uh, Dan Simon uh, that you produce and I never would have imagined a hundred episodes and an episode like tonight Justin Williams, Mo Egger Andre Morgan Danko Joe like I <laughs> those are fun ones man it was the best it, it really was a great episode so go check out the, uh, the Brady live Collins feeds. Brady Collins, who is <laughs> like somehow has become that's the, the fourth member of that's the podcast. The craziest, that's the craziest part of all of it is we have we have an actual coach who's our unofficial fourth. <laughs> not, not not just an actual coach, but oh, I don't know, Luke Fickle's the second most important person in the program. <laughs> Luke Fickle's right hand man. <laughs> yeah. it's crazy. Um, all right, so so there were two things today, Aaron, that I that I think we should talk about. Start with the, when start it, with the start with the football one, and then we'll get to the fun one. No, I I've got two football things, and then we'll, whatever you think is the fun one, we'll get to that later. Okay. PFF today released their uh, their top linebacker cores in the country. My favorite part about that tweet was how they announced it with question marks at number two. Yeah, number two, the number two linebacking core in the country. You had to the click Cincinnati the article. Bearcats. You had to click yeah. the article to find out. The Cincinnati Bearcats. Largely because they have the Pace Brothers as like two of the 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 top ten line clearly two of the most elite linebackers in the country are Ivan and Deshaun Pace. How Ivan Pace has gone from at, during spring running with the twos to possibly Maybe the best linebacker on this core. He has been a menace. He has been a wrecking ball. There's no other way to describe him. He's if if you if you're a bowling ball as a running back, a la <laughs> yeah. a la MJD, who right. I, I believe he's also been compared to at linebacker. Um yeah. Mike I mean, Warren was a wrecking ball at at running back. That he, is who I see Ivan Pace as as a linebacker. He's it's, disastrous. It's fascinating to think that Deshaun may not be the best Pace brother on this linebacking court, and he's really good. That, that's not a knock on him <laughs> right. at all. That's not a Pete knock. Pete Dammel today. I mentioned when I interviewed today on radio, when, when you the got number interviewed. one college football analyst in the country – and he was like, what do you think about Ivan Pace? And I was like, I think he might be the best player on this defense. And he was like, what do you what do you mean? It's Tell Deshaun. Me it's Deshaun. And I was like, look, I think Deshaun's going to be amazing. He's incredible. He's one of the best linebackers in the country. And his older brother might be better. 
Like Mac Player of the Year. I mean, it's it's not like he doesn't come without accolades. Third team All American. And don't get me wrong, I understand that it's the Mac. But I think the thing that, like, if you look at that PFF article, what they talked about was on passing downs, mm-hmm. he All is right. a disaster. He gets to your quarterback, he stops plays in the in, in the middle of the field, whatever it is that you need to happen on passing downs. Ivan Pace is as good as anyone in America. And we saw that. That wasn't just something that, like, that's kind of the thing with PFF occasionally that I'm like, okay, their numbers say something that I don't see. So how important, though, is Coleraine High School to this program at this point? Right. Especially the linebacking core between Deshaun, between Ivan Pace, Darian Beavers. I mean, right. there's been some dudes of Jaylen late. Hicks. Of late, but but there have definitely been some Dante Corleone. There's like five, six Coleraine guys that, that are going to be a factor. And that's only talking about the current team. That's not going back right. into, into the, into the books. Right. Revels was a Coleraine guy. Um, Goody was a Coleraine guy. There was uh, a, a white, white safety. No, I don't pay attention to white safeties. I'm sorry. He was he was good back. <laughs> I, back I'm in... kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. But, but yeah, Maybe like we are we are at a point where like the Colerain guys you have to like circle and star. And I I think when you look at this linebacker core, I think Ivan Pace is going to be the best player on this defense. It's definitely something that we're going to keep tabs on throughout the season. And I think there will be plenty, plenty of conversations about which Pace brother was the best Pace right? brother in the, in the last game. In each specific game. Yes, in each game, which Pace brother was the best Pace brother? We're, we'll, we'll be keeping. We'll be keeping pace of which Pace is 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 keeping the pace. So here's the other thing. Um, in my interview with Pete Thamel today, that was the strangest interview I've ever done. <laughs> You called me to tell me that. I I had the number one college football media person on the Mo Egger show. I don't know that we can say number one media person. I think we can say... No, I think Pete Thamel's number one. I think we can say number one writer. No, breaking it, news, insider, you name it, he does it. Is ESPN having him on to talk? I don't. I don't watch. Oh, yeah. his, I, I, oh, I don't yeah. want. I don't watch no. a ton of ESPN. He is, anymore. he is now a staple on College Game Day. This is his first year with ESPN. Okay. He was at Yahoo last year. Now he's with ESPN. He's hosting or like the the number one voice on their college football podcast. He's on Game Day. Okay. Like, so I, I didn't Dammel know he... has grown into this monster and at I ESPN. I didn't know how much he had entered the vocal realm. So okay. He interviewed me. He shut me down as I was trying to talk to him. He's like, tell me more about the Bearcats. I'm like, Pete, this is it's my interview. <laughs> that go He's you? like, I've got questions. Well, okay, then I guess it's your interview now. You're the captain. He gave me the I'm the captain now, and I was like, you're right. What are you doing? <laughs> but I think there's just this like wild variance on this UC team because nobody really has, unless you've been at camp, unless you've been at every practice, unless you've been talking to the coaches and the staff and the support staff, I don't think there's a lot of people that have a good grasp on where this Bearcat team is heading into Arkansas. And that includes the national media. I don't know that. Even the fans, like Cincinnati fans, I'm, I, I think yeah. we're all we're all we're all very concerned about this game, <laughs> right? Of course, and I and said all the ways. I said today, and I will say it tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, on the the BCJ podcast. Like I will say it throughout the process. 
I give Arkansas the edge because they have the veteran quarterback. They have the guy that has done it at the highest level. Maybe Ben Bryant or Evan Prater steps in and takes that crown. But until then, I think you have to be respectful of the fact that Arkansas has a guy that's done it before. Yeah. I mean, is that if we were, fair? If we were running Des back out there again this year, because he did have an, a year of eligibility. Yeah. Uh, if you're running Des back out there, I think that I, I don't know that Cincinnati anybody Cincinnati wins by 10. Yeah. I, I, we're getting probably 13 and a half right now. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, without question. However, there's question marks up and down the board. So right. it's, it's a little different. Uh, that said, I mean, the, we all know. I asked Mo about this. What we do you all... think of the line dropping? The line opened at seven and a half. We're down to five and a half. I asked Pete Thamel. He said he thought the line would be four, maybe three and a half, which is an indication to me that we might continue to see that line to drop. What do you think of that? Like the initial, initial line was. Arkansas was going to kind of win comfortably here to now essentially you're getting the home field advantage, which is three points and like a field goal. I think it's going to be probably a fascinating game. I think it's going to be, it's going to be a boxing match, right? Like, I don't think there, I don't think you're going to see a team. Like, I mean, we heard uh, what's his name. Uh, Sam Pittman. Thank you. Um, we, we saw, Sam Pittman say today he can't wait until halftime. I don't. I actually believe him a thousand percent that he can't wait until halftime to know a gauge of what this Who's the Cincinnati, starter. What's what, Cincinnati? What, like? What's the Cincinnati team? Right. We we can't wait for halftime either as fans because we don't know either. Like what is this team? I I I. If you had Luke with true serum, I think he would say the same thing. I also can't wait for halftime to right. know. What we have. And I, I, I think right. that that's a fair assessment. We're going to talk about this a shit ton over the next couple you, of days. You and Dave will have this all broken down. Here's the fun topic. Sauce sauce. Sauce sauce. <laughs> Look, a long, from, a long time coming. Right? Yeah. We, the, we the all partnership was with B-dubs. Yeah. B-W, Buffalo Wild Wings. Have you heard what the mixture is? I've heard what somebody on Reddit said it was, and who knows how much you've. I've heard that. people that I've talked to people that have had it, and they say that is accurate. I am not. I have not had personally the Asian zing. Fantastic by itself, by the way. I have some actually oh, in the cab or in the in the fridge upstairs. It sounds like a flavor I would love. It's it's but, it's got some kick. I don't your yeah. your nose your nose will be running your face will be sweating I know you. So the 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 thought is or at least the word is that the sauce sauce is a mix of Asian zing and their barbecue. Well, it's it's not just their barbecue. I believe it's the sweet barbecue. Okay. Um that said, we don't know what the mixture is is it a one to one? Is it a right? Two some of one, this, some right. of that. Who knows what the actual mix is? That all said, sounds fantastic. I'm in because I like Asian Zing. I, I'm not one to normally get barbecue when I go get wings because I like so. The kick. But I'm a huge barbecue wing person. If we're messing around with with spicy barbecue, now you're talking my language. Right. I've always loved spicy barbecue. That's why I was uh, attracted to Carolina Gold. Uh, initially from um, Wild Mike's. Yeah. And their Carolina Gold, you could pick the heat. So it was a mustard barbecue, pick the heat. Instantly, when I tried that, I was like, this is my jam. Because I was always a spicy barbecue wing person. More than just the standard buffalo, like... Hot, you mild, know, the, the buffalo hot. Like I, yeah, that's like, not. I like the barbecue, the brown sugar, the the honey. You with got the a little, sweet, with yeah, a little kick a, to it. You got a sweet tooth. It's fine. I like I like the mild and the medium and the. But the, the mustard's hot. not sweet. 
No, but I mean, you're talking brown sugar and honey and all that. Yeah, the, there's your sweet yeah. tooth, Chad. Yeah, I'm, but I'm not ultimately. I'm just saying this. This was inevitable. We talked about this for what do you, years. What do you think about the name Sauce Sauce? I I tweeted it's perfect. I it's tw- perfect. It's a train wreck where you can't. You a can't perfect you can't, train wreck. You can't look away. You can't. It's it's the I, I said this earlier and I stand by this statement. It is the best and worst name at the same time. The best outweighs the worst, but it's so it's there so, was so, only one other option. Sauces sauce would be the other option. That's no, what it should there have been. There was only one other option. Just call it sauce. Sauce. Yeah. <laughs> sauce. That's the only other option. Like Madonna, Prince. Sauce, and maybe we get that down the road, but like sauce, sauce is like that's that's where we're at right now. He hasn't proven anything in the, in the NFL. He, he's enough. not like a, a legacy player. I mean, I guess kind. Of, if I feel like if I was playing on NFL and I, I had had or on Madden and I had somebody who they just don't throw my way at all, I feel like I've built up some Hall of Fame points. But I digress. We're not there yet. He, he hasn't no played a regular season game. No one's throwing to him still in preseason. Right. It's because preseason. It's, because it's a terrible idea. <laughs> he did get ex- but, he did get exposed a little bit against the Giants in the joint practice, which are terrible ideas. But he right. still oh, got okay. exposed a little bit <laughs> in, in the joint practices. Um, but Alec Pierce exposed him at, at time to time in practice. Yeah, but nobody got to see that. There, and you there know what? I, I did. I wasn't, saw there, it. there wasn't filmed media, though, the way that there are in NFL yeah. joint practices. They don't let us do that. <laughs> we don't. We don't really, really get to record those things. But I would say, in two years from now, it's just going to be sauce. It's really hard to Google just sauce. <laughs> Right now, sauce sauce is is probably that's as good as it gets. Sauces. Asian zing and barbecue, some sauce, level of barbecue. Sauces sauce would be a little easier to, to Google. No, sauce yes, sauce. It would. No, sauce sauce on your wing wings. <laughs> that's it. We'll see you tomorrow night. It's a nightcap brought to you by Galactic Chicken right here on Bearcat Journal. See ya, see ya!